seen Hoovy and Tom Baker's reign, seven year reign, as the Doctor came to a close and we began the Peter Davison era. Hi, it's Time Lord Miff here. If this is your first trip to the classic Hoovians, thanks very much for joining us. And if you want to impress all your friends with your knowledge of classic Doctor Who facts and trivia, then hit that subscribe button and the bell notification and you'll always be up to date. All right. Hoovians. Today we're going to be looking at Peter Davison's first story, Castraval. Now, I have to say from the get-go, um, Hoovians, that I am not a fan of Castraval, and nor am I a fan of the previous story, Logopolis, that were both written by Christopher H. Bibb. Now, Castravalva is actually a replacement story. There was a story called uh, Project uh, Zigma. I think it was called that, yeah. Um, yeah, Project uh, uh, Zeta Sigma, and that was written by uh, John Fleming and Andrew McCulloch, and it was all about nuclear disarmament, and it actually um, didn't follow on from Logopolis. It, it actually was meant to be the travellers had already left Earth. Now, it doesn't say in the research I've done whether the Doctor had actually regenerated or not. Um, I don't know. I'm assuming he did because of the last scene. Uh, in Logopolis, but this story, which was all about nuclear disarmament, um, just proved unworkable. So producer John Nathan Turner asked Christopher H. Bidney, who was leaving as the script editor, whether he could pen an alternative story. Now in this story, we have uh, Peter Davison, who's all weak and, um, you know, disorientated from his regeneration, and he gets uh, the companions, Adric, uh, Tegan and Nyssa, uh, to help him into the TARDIS uh, to find the Zero Room, which is a room which is totally cut off from, from space-time. It, it, it uh, has te Time Lord technology that will help him 
recover and regenerate and there's a line I love in this which uh, I've told you I'm not a fan of the show but there's a line in this where um, the doctor says it, it's a, you know a place totally you know cut off from from the rest of the universe from time and space and Tegan says oh if I'd known he wanted that I could take him in to Brisbane or something along those lines and as an Australian I can really appreciate that and of course you may uh, not know that um, Tegan, uh, the companion who was Australian, was actually from Brisbane. But back to the story, and we have the master again, who has constructed a nefarious scheme because he didn't get rid of the doctor last time, just caused him to regenerate. So he's actually captured Adric, and he's got him captured in this web that um, basically taps into his mathematical skills. And he's created a, a console on the TARDIS, um, or, a, or a sort of, yeah, a, a sort of adjunct to the TARDIS, uh, where they think, Tegan and Nissa think they can actually fly the TARDIS, and it's preset, so they use this, and it takes them back almost to the Big Bang, where the TARDIS will be destroyed. And they manage to get the Doctor out of the Zero Room, and basically save them. But what the Master has done, he's actually, um, incorporated uh, into the TARDIS a, a, a database about a place called Castra Valva, uh, which is, you know, so tranquil and quiet and it, it was meant, you know, the place to go where the Doctor would be able to recover. Now, one of the problems they had was that uh, to, to escape the Big Bang, the Doctor needed to jettison, you know, one third of the TARDIS. And he actually, uh, what he did was, um, he jettisoned the, the zero room, so they had to con construct a sort of coffin for him so that he could still use its effect, but it'd be very a lot smaller. And Tegan and Nissa would have to struggle with it up to the cliff face to get him to the town of Castrobal. Now, Christo H. Bidmead um, named this story Castrovalva um, after a lithograph by famed uh, Dutch graphic artist uh, MC Isha and he's the one who did all those really trippy uh, lithographs where you see stairs going up but they don't go anywhere and they go down and it does your head in you know those ones well that's basically the story of, of Castro Valva you know that it's a town that doesn't exist and, and um, every place leads to another and the girls find that when they leave their room and they go even by different exits they find themselves back in this plaza so that's one of the reasons i don't like castra valve at um because i find it a bit pretentious and yeah it just didn't do anything for me now the production crew wanted to hide the fact that in episode three um the master would be revealed as one of the characters um, or the town inhabitants, the poor Treve, basically, in uh, Castro Valva. And so they credited uh, the poor Treve as being played by Neil Tune, who was, was actually an anagram of Anthony Ainsley, his name. So they kept it a secret, and that's not the first time they've actually done that. And there's a very funny story uh, that uh, you can hear on the DVD commentary. Now, um, you know, the producers asked uh, Matthew Waterhouse, who played Adric, if after, you know, the whole thing and he's um, been released or escaped from the Master's web, he could look pale and drawn. Well, apparently that wasn't a problem because he'd overdone it and um, he, by drinking Campari the night before and he had a hangover. And there's one scene where he's actually throwing up behind a tree, but they kept filming uh, not showing him, of course, so that they wouldn't have to wait for him to feel better. Well, there you go, Hoovians. There's some interesting facts and um, um, some trivia about uh, Peter Davison's first uh, story, Castra Valva. And um, I hope you've enjoyed our look back at uh, this story. Um, as I said, it's not one of my favourites, and as a post-regenerative story, I, I just found it a bit too, as I said, pretentious and, you know, a bit too la di da and not, not, it wasn't, to me, it wasn't really, you know, engrossing. Uh, mostly, 
about the doctor, you know, trying to get over his post-regenerative um, dilemma and um, just with, you know, references thrown into um, Isha and, and so forth. But then I'm not a big Christopher H. Bidmead fan, okay? Well, that's it, Whovians. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this look back. And don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe down there. And uh, if you've got anything to say about Castro Valve, I'd be really happy to hear from you. Now, um, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. If Castro Valve is one of your favourite I Love It stories, let me know in the comments. Tell me what you like about it. And if it's not, if you agree with me and it's not one of your favourite stories, let me know too, because I'd love to start a discussion about Castro Valve and and the start of the Davison era. Okay, well that's it, um, Whovians. Can you believe it? We only started the classic Whovian channel last week and we're already nearly through the first stories of each of the Doctors from the classic era. We've only got the Twin Dilemma to go and then Time and the Rani and it's time to start a new playlist. So I'd like to, what would you like me to do a playlist about? Perhaps the best Doctor Who stories, the worst Doctor Who stories, top 10 companions, worst 10 companions. Let me know. Anything goes as long as it's within the classic era. Okay, that's it from me, Time Lord Myth, signing off. And until our next video, I'll see you somewhere in time and space. Bye. For